business development for Mission Critical Systems, a SharePoint development company based here in Denver, Colorado. And today I have a quick video for you on how to have forms in SharePoint using content types or how to have a standard templates. Uh, uh, and in this, this example, we'll be talking about a project template. Let me get to the screen. Uh, so we have a, a standard document library here. And I have uh, uh, several different custom columns that I've created. This probably looks pretty familiar to anyone who's used uh, SharePoint before. I'll click on Quick Edit to show that these are drop-down items here. And some of these are fields that I've typed data into. So these are a list of documents that all have to do with governing a project and project completion. Uh, all of the standard document management features that everyone has with a document library, uh, things like being able to only look at specific documents and be able to sort. Of course, I have the search uh, feature up there, and I can create my custom views and things like that. It really is just a standard document library, except that there is uh, one big difference, and that is that I've created sim uh, several custom content types for the different types of reports that would be filed in this document library. So to add a new document here, I'm going to click on File. I'm going to click on the drop-down for New Document. And then I can choose, first of all, Document, which is just a Word document. Or I could choose Project Completion, Project Charter, Project Plan, Risk, or Status Report, any of these different content types that I've created. I'm going to choose the Project Completion Report as an example of this. Um, I'm going to open in Microsoft Word. And I have a, a regular Word screen, except for there being a, an area here in which metadata can be filled out. Now, there's a neat feature with this that I'll go through. Uh, project title, I'm going to add this. I'm going to name this the Edison Telephone. For project manager, it was, uh, I think, James who did that. For the client, it's going to be the Eyebrows Incorporated. And it's going to be a completion document. So I filled out the metadata at the top of the page. I can now close that screen out for a second. And you'll notice that the metadata that I just filled out is actually visible within the document itself. Under project name, I have Edison Telephone Client as Eyebrows Incorporated. Uh, the project manager is James. I can then fill out my document with status, complete, open milestones, none, issues and challenges, nothing, and lessons learned, stuff. And then I can save my document. And it's going to save it right back into my document library that it came from. And in this case, we're using kind of a random string of letters. Of course, this would need to adhere to whatever uh, standard naming practices you have. Now, if I go back into my document library and refresh the screen, it's going to show here a bunch of documents. Here, I'll just use the features to very quickly find my uh, Edison Telephone document. And you'll see uh, the project completion document for Edison Telephone listed right there. So the document has been added into, into SharePoint. You'll notice that the project manager, client, uh, project document type, and the title, those have all been filled out. Uh, uh, so it's a, an instance where you can fill out the data once as metadata within Word, and it gets populated everywhere else. It's populated into the SharePoint library, it gets populated in the document, and uh, it can even go into databases and that kind of thing. Uh, and it's, it's uh, a very uh, functional thing to do. There's no instance of, or, or no uh, occurrence where people might be accidentally saving over the template file. I know that happens a lot or um, you know, accidentally screwing up the template in some way. Uh, these templates are safe. They're, they're content types, so they're away from the general user base. And it's um, a very quick way of uh, you know, being able to create this. Now, there are some ways to extend this. And I'll, I'll talk through some different ideas I have for you know, how this could be worked out. And then I'll also talk about some, uh, some of how I did this, I guess, some of the behind the curtains, how this actually works. Um, first of all, a few ways to extend this is, as you'll notice, this is great data, or this could be great data, you know, if I were to fill in uh, um, project completion percentage or, or other kind of data that would want to be tracked by the company. And I can, of course, pull that data coming out into Excel, uh, you know, very simply here, too. And there's my data for it. Uh, I might also have that automatically done, so it's pulled automatically into a database once those documents are completed. So it's coming from a document to a document library into a database where things like reports and charts and graphs could be uh, could be derived. You can also go the other, other direction. Uh, that's actually a pretty common request for us. Uh, and what I mean by that is maybe someone fills out a form that fills out a database, and then a document uh, using that data in the database could be automatically generated. So for example, the um, Edison Telephone Charter could be automatically created based on, or, or the, at least the, the first part of it could be automatically created based on what data was put into a database. And that's a common request for us. Uh, we see that a lot. You can 
also go through and create some workflows for this. So maybe whenever a, a project completion uh, document is filed, it needs to uh, be submitted to a set of individuals, or it needs to be sent back to the project manager specifically um, on that on that uh, project. And I can use the workflow settings here to create a custom workflow along those lines. And then I guess the last idea is we have, um, you know, maybe the company goes through and does 30 different projects a month, and creating a different uh, document library with all those templates every single time is just not realistic. Well, I can save all of this into a custom uh, project site and then have that automatically, uh, automatically generated. So in this example, I have a, a timeline here using SharePoint, and then also I have a list of my project files. And I can I could create um, a document library, an empty document library that would have all those document types available um, every time that that new uh, document was or that new new uh, project site was uh, spun up. So I have these available to you as well. So those are a few ideas for how that could be extended, and I'm sure there's there's many many more. There's there's a, there's no end to uh, what you can do and what clients do want with SharePoint definitely. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how to do this. The whole process for creating this system took about an hour or an hour and a half or so. So it's, it's pretty pretty quick, um, uh, considering it's a custom solution. Um, and I, I won't go through all the different parts for it. For content types, you can see from previous blog posts if you're interested in those kinds of things. But I'm going to go through specifically how to add the con the uh, the custom column data into a Word document because that's really kind of a neat feature. Um, the, the way you would do that is you'd create a new document. Well, the first thing you do is you're going to create your document library with all the custom columns that you have. And I can go into uh, library settings under the library tab, and I can create my custom columns here, create columns. And if you've used SharePoint uh, to any extent at all, you probably have done something similar to this, where you go through and name the column, at, uh, select the type of uh, uh, content that you want to have in that, and then click OK at the bottom and it's going to come up with the custom column data. I can then go through and click on, uh, once I've created all those columns, I'm going to click on New Document at the top here. Oh, no, I, I'm going to click on File and New Document, and that's going to open the standard template, which is just a Word document. And you'll notice you'll have a Word document, but it also has that metadata link at the top. Uh, I want to use this data in the document, and that's specifically what I'm going to go through uh, uh, here for the next couple of seconds. What I can do is type in, um, just a regular document, uh, as you always would. You know, I can use all the all the editing and the and the uh, other features that are inherent in Microsoft Word. So I'm going to have project title listed there, and then um, you know, project manager. I'm going to spell properly. Is it there too? And then once I've gone through and I've created the doc uh, the document with all the spaces for the data from up here that I want to have in it. I can go back and I click on the Insert tab. I go to Quick Parts. I go to Document Property, and then I choose whichever whichever properties are that I would like to have show up in the document. So for Project Title, I want let's see what did I have? I have Title for that document, and then for Project Manager, Quick Parts, Document Property, I have Project Manager listed. Now the trick is you have to use you have to first create the columns and then create a document out of that document library in order to have access to this data. Because if you just open up Microsoft Word and click on Quick Parts and Document Property, none of the information here that's coming from SharePoint is going to be available to you. So the first step is to always create the columns and then create the document out of the document library. And then you'll have access to all of the uh, different uh, features there. You'll notice I even have a drop-down menu. So I can choose from here the uh, uh, project manager that I'm interested in. So once I've gone through and I've, I've created the document and, and done all the formatting work that I want to have on my on my new template, I then just save the document to your to uh, to my desktop. Save as desktop, and it's going to be whatever it is. And then I use that saved document as my uh, template for my content type. And that's uh, talked through in a couple of other uh, blog posts that we put together for you guys. So that's uh, one example of how to use uh, a document library to save custom template uh, documents. And uh, hopefully it's very helpful to everybody to see. Uh, again, I'm Stephen Nichols from Mission Critical Systems. If you have questions about this tip or anything else about SharePoint, please do reach out to me. I'd be happy to uh, uh, explain some more. And you'll see my information there. Uh, in any case, thank you very much for your time. And, and uh, best of luck with all your SharePoint endeavors.